All right, hey, welcome back. Let's make another histogram. Um, so we already have the table given. Um, this is actually one we made earlier um, where we're looking at the homework scores for 44 students. So again, our variable was score and we have a discrete variable. Essentially numerical is important. Um, so this is gonna look a little different since we have single values um, rather than um, groups like before, um, but we're still going to make sure there's no gaps on our bars. So let's go ahead and make a frequency um, histogram. So the variable always goes on the bottom. And I'm going to space it out a little, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to jump to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm doing every, I'm putting two bars in between. Um, you'll see why by the time it's done and I'll label it H. Don't forget to label your graphs. And then we're gonna do frequency up and down. Um, I need to make room for 16, because that's my largest value. So the scale, we do 16. Um, if you're doing this on your homework, I usually divide by about 10, because 10 is a good amount of bars to have. But it looks like I only have one, two, three, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight available. But um, on binder paper, I go to around eight to 10. 10 is just an easy number, so I usually do 10. Um, and so we get two. Two is a nice, easy, oops, I said to do relative frequency here. So if I was doing frequency, I would count by twos. Um, but we're gonna look at relative frequency. So my largest value is actually the 3636. Three, and we found that there were eight boxes available. Again, eight to 10 on binder paper sounds good. And I am not counting by this number, right? 04545 and then add 045, right? It's confusing. We wanna round up to something nice. So hopefully we all see that maybe 0.05 would be easy because we're counting by fives just in decimal form. So we'll go by 05. So 05, 10, 0 0.10, right, 0 0.15, 20, 25, 30, just with decimals, 35, and then 40. And 0 0.3636 36 fits, so perfect. So what I'm gonna do on these ones is I'm actually gonna have, since we have single values, um, we're gonna label the center of the bar rather than the endpoints. Right, it's kind of weird to go zero to one because it's not really representing zero to one, it's only representing zero. So instead, I'm gonna put zero in the center. We're gonna go up to 06, so slightly above five, and it looks like this. And notice I have zero in the center of the bar instead. For a single value, right now I look at that really quickly and know it's only the number zero. So for one, we're gonna go to 04, so we'll go there. And again, the bar is the exact same size and we have the number one in the middle. The bars are touching on purpose. It allows us to kind of see flow. So two, we're gonna go up to 06. Three, we're gonna go all the way up to point two. So that'll be slightly more than 20. Right there. Four, we're gonna go all the way up to 36, which is above 35. And then five, we're gonna to go to 25. And that is our histogram. And I think last time we asked if the majority had at least four. And I think on a graph, it's a lot easier to see that. A lot of students are getting at least four. So with histograms, um, with single values, we label the center. So essentially the bars start and end at the like midpoints or the mid marks. So I kind of like this better than what I wrote, but right, we're labeling the center. It just looks better. 
Um, zero through one would be kind of confusing, so we'll label the middle. Cool. Um, I think I just have one more. Let's do one more graph. Um, so for categorical data, we're still going to make these bar graphs, um, but they're going to look a little different. Um, so let's start with a pie chart and then we'll do a bar graph. Um, so we're going to go back to that network data. Our variable is network, right? And this is categorical because it's in words. Um, and then we can make pie charts with categorical data. Um, they don't really make that much sense for numerical data most of the time. So we prefer them for categorical. Um, so I usually just do really light lines to maybe find quarters and then kind of erase them and guess. So ABC is 25%, 0.25 is 25%. So ABC would be exactly a quarter of this. And then CBS is 40 and then NBC is 35. Um, those are a little hard to estimate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw two more pieces, one a little bit bigger than the other of what's left over. We're just estimating. So we can just estimate when we make them by hand. When we get on StatCrunch later, we can make better pie charts. And I'll just make sure CBS gets the piece that ended up a little bit bigger. So on mine, the purple's a little bit bigger. Both of these should be bigger than ABC but CBS should be the biggest. And that's a pie chart. So let's do a bar chart. We don't call it a histogram anymore because it's um, not numerical. Histogram has that nice flow and no gaps. Um, it's not quite the same for categorical. We basically just call it a bar chart because there's no number flow. Histograms have a nice number flow. So it's going to look like a histogram with a few changes. So we'll just put the categories on the bottom, just like we put the variable on the bottom. All right, these are our networks. And then we're going to do frequencies. So frequency goes up and down. We're only going up to eight, so I'll just go zero, one, two, three, right? Eight's the largest. Four, five, six, seven, eight. If you have binder paper, right, each line of binder paper could be your count. And then we're just gonna go ahead and make bars. So ABC goes up to five, so we go up to five, label the center, that's ABC. CBS has eight, so we just go up to eight, and I am gonna do gaps this time. That's CBS, and then NBC has seven. Um, so I did do gaps because there's no natural flow. Like numbers have a nice flow, zero, one, two, three, right? There's no re reason like ABC flows into CBS, so we have gaps. So with categorical data, there's always gaps. Numerical does not. So that's our last bar graph. Um, we'll start a new graph in the next video.